We're sitting here in Mumbai at the Grand Hyatt and I'm sitting alongside the founder of SheThePeople.tv, Shelly Chopra. What an awesome initiative you run. It's great to meet you and well done on the great work. Thanks very much. It's fantastic to be with you on this show. And uh, you said She The People. It's a good time to remind everyone that the Indian constitution starts with the three words, We The People. And I woke up and said, well, you can't have the success of We The People without She The People. When you have a look at gender empowerment around the world, you need champions. How did you become a champion for women empowerment? So I think uh, it has a lot to do with uh, how my upbringing was and uh, particularly what my journalism stood for. Uh, I was raised in a house with most women. We had two sisters. Or we always did what we wanted to do. I felt that when I grew up that this position this ability to do what you want to do is a position of privilege. And I think that's really unfair, to be honest. Uh, why should our dreams not, uh, and our missions and our vision not have its own wings and its own ability to, uh, you know, sort of flourish? Uh, so when I started journalism, uh, I ended up being a business journalist, and I was probably one of three or four female journalists who were doing business television at that point in a pool of hundreds of men. Uh, and what I recognized by that was that when you go out there to tell stories, you're going to tell stories that you're surrounded by. So if you're going to be surrounded by men and they're the ones who are the super achievers, you're only going to be end ending up telling their stories. Which is when, when I had the opportunity to move from broadcast to digital, I chose to go out and find the women who had stories, but nobody was willing to tell them. And that's how She the People was born. The need for us to find stories of everyday women having every, everyday struggles and everyday successes and making that really, you know, normalizing that, making that commonplace. She the people TV. For those who have not encountered it, when they do encounter it, how does it make them feel? So, you know, First, I think the most powerful piece of this is the name, right? It suddenly makes you, pe makes you feel that you are the universe. You're not a tiny part of the universe, you know, you're not, you're not a corner of the universe. I love talking about statistics because I'm a training, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, by training I'm an economist. But if you look at the world's population, right, 50% of the world is female. And when I superimpose some of the numbers out of India, which as you know is one of the most populous countries in the world, we are 1.3 billion people. We are 700 plus, 700 million plus female, right? That's twice the size of the United States, five times the size of Brazil, and seven times the size of Japan, and I'm still talking about Indian women. Doesn't that make you wake up and feel, well, we're a market, yeah. we're a force, we are, we can get organized, we're a movement, we're a revenue piece, you know, talk to us, where are you, right? So I think for most people, the idea of She the People is not just a place where they go and talk, uh, describe, uh, share opinions, get perspective, get news, get inspiration and information to live life on their own terms. But it's a movement of sorts that takes women beyond themselves and uh, leverages on the power of the collective. But you've done something really special because you were a star in your own right, you've had your own profile and platform, and you've got SheThePeople.tv, but you also are a huge supporter of women's sport. So yes. talk to us about your passion for golf and GolfingIndian.com. So I have to say, while I love golf as a sport and it's my personal passion driving piece, I truly think the way sport empowers women across any sport is just transformational, right? Because what sport does is builds you up from every aspect of your personality. Not only does it sort of train you to be an expert in one thing, but it also builds your confidence, it builds your ability to talk to others, it builds your ability to believe and take chances on yourself. So I think like sport has magic in it. And, and for me personally, uh, I, have, I have been a very young learner of the sport of golf and never really wanted to do it professionally, but it supported my life as a professional. Uh, as, as a woman journalist talking to CEOs, golf was a tool. Right? It's not just a sport for me. And so as a result, when I started my passion project, golfingindian.com, please go and check it out, 
you know, we do a lot for women there too. And when She the People was born, we have a dedicated space called She Sport. And it focuses on women from all over the country, if not overseas, also women who are looking at sport differently and how it changes them. There's an amazing story in India of Duti Chan, right? A woman who came out of the closet and talked about her self uh, and, and her relationship with her partner and she was criticized because she came from well for one it's it's very it's still not commonplace for people to accept same-sex relationships but two it's been really challenging for women who come from backgrounds where they have never had exposure to these conversations they've been raised uh, you know to believe that they are less of a human being and then they emerge into these powerful personalities thanks to the sport that changed them or brought them success, right? So I think that truly changes the way we um, see empowerment through sport. So hats off to uh, the way you look at sport at G-Sport because I think sport is a great starting point for those who are otherwise intimidated by various other things. If you're, if you're a sports person, especially a sportswoman, you pretty much have a lot of stuff eliminated that would intimidate you mm. you know and I think that's a great start for women the lack of information has prevented women from picking up sponsorship in India how do you rate women's sport and the support that they get I don't have much good news there <laughs> uh, like many places in yeah. the world uh, I'm going by the US soccer team the female soccer team you know it seems like just yesterday that they've gotten onto an equal keel right or look at the Australian cricket teams where women are getting paid at par uh, as men or so I hear um, these things have happened in less than like three years I mean we're we're in 2020 right I mean these were 2020 goals or what we grew up with when the world would change and women would be equal and we're here and nothing seems like that so I think there's a massive gap in the way people perceive how sport today um, is a game changer but at the same time people are not pumping in enough money uh, in sport for women I think there is way too much rationalization that there isn't enough uh, eyeballs that there isn't enough of our market you know it's a chicken and egg you pump in the money you show the market to people they'll start watching it there's a very good case uh, in example in India which is a cricket obsessed nation as you know in Kabaddi Kabaddi is a sport that uh, many, uh, you know, many small and mid-towns in India have grown up with. It wasn't fashionable and suddenly it went on television and corporates decided to adopt it, pay some money, create leagues out of it. You know, it's damn sexy today. And people had never thought this. I thought Kabaddi was dead like 15, 20 years ago, right? Uh, but my son, who's five years old, knows about Kabaddi. And at home, he challenges me to do, play that game in the drawing room. This is what we need to do. We need to take women's sport into the drawing room. We've got to have far more conversation, far more promotion, far more advertising on appointment viewing, on women's sport matches. You came to India and covered cricket in, in Gujarat. She the people uh, was present there in, in many of those matches. We saw such tremendous cricket by That's both amazing. South African women and Indian women. But why haven't we had enough uh, spotlight, right? So I think things need to change drastically it's hard for us to say as, as somebody rationalized one day said you know it took 110 years for cricket to become what it is I said let us not have to wait that long because the work has been done and if we're sitting here saying the time is to come when is that time but at the same time we're sitting here today and yesterday talking about revenue talking about monetizing initiatives how tough is it for women initiatives to find support from not just corporates but entities that should be supporting women so I read this quote in The Economist and I'm just paraphrasing it uh, from whatever I remember that the biggest revenue potential that lies ahead is unlocking the market of women and there I look at it as an economy I look at it as a as, as a market I look at it across sectors across genres across age groups I think we've just forgotten that women are consumers of stuff beyond cold creams and lipsticks we really need to wake up and smell the coffee because today women are 
if not the direct buyers, certainly the influencers or which bank account you open, which car you buy, which tires you change, which restaurant you arrive at, which holiday destination you take, and for that matter, even which software you download. So I just don't understand why they still don't recognize the power of women to change the game for countries, for companies, and so on. Personally, for me, I have been uh, speaking to a large number of CEOs, trying to tell them it's all important to have CSR money to support initiatives around women or in any other space. It's equally important to make this issue of women's economy, the women's internet, the women's opportunity, an issue of the corner office where the CEO sits. it's not sits. a charity. Right. It's, yeah. it's, it's a strategy. It's a strategic thinking piece. So, I mean, you know, I'm sure there's a figure for South Africa, but the figure for India is that if you actually do bring in more women in the workforce, you're going to see a jump of 27% in the GDP. Wow. Right? That's a significant jump. That's a number you go and find. You don't let it go. When a country is talking about a slowdown and potential challenges to an economy, you go and find that 27% so that you can make that happen by simply pretty much opening the taps, you know, uh, and getting women to recognize the need to work, get into the workforce, get into the economy, either through entrepreneurship or through any other opportunities. You're a leading women entrepreneur, you're a mom, you're a genuine all-rounder, author, broadcaster, how do you do it all? As someone said this, it's not easy. <laughs> Let me not make it sound like it's like making a bowl of pasta and coming out and sitting on a couch and eating it. It's not one of those things, to be honest. Um, you know, it's, it's been a cliche, and a cliche uh, it, that women are multitaskers. I just think just by my own example and yours and many other women around us, including those who don't even necessarily sit on the regular achievers table, right? Just like everyday women, like, the woman on the road who's going to work, works at five homes, on the way back, picks up fruit for her kids, takes a train, goes back home, is back tomorrow, you know. She, everyone's just multitasking, right? It's not easy, but I suppose we all find ways to balance our ambition, our aspirations, with also what we love. I think at, at one point, women struggled with talking about motherhood as professionals. Uh, they, they shied away from coming in public when they were pregnant. Uh, I, as a television presenter, saw many colleagues and contemporaries never even talk about their pregnancy or marriage or relationships or dating relationships. Always making apology, apology. for their success. Exactly. An apology yeah. and, and had sort of this fear that if they talk about it in public, suddenly their image would impact. Look at Bollywood. Mm. You know, we recently at She the People did an amazing story, deep dive into how becoming, um, being a married actress is no longer, um, you know, a black spot on your career. Why? Because still 10 years ago, no director wanted to speak to an actress if she was married. 80% of the actors from the 80s and 90s never disclosed who they got married to, if they ever got married at all, because they never had public weddings. Today you have women, in fact, most, um, you know, well-to-do celebrities in India today are married, are openly talking about marriage and motherhood. Things that have just never happened. I mean, you know, we were always talking to celebrities about their zero, zero, whatever, zero waste diets or whatever they're called, right? We are not, no longer talking about that. So I think we're moving the needle, but it obviously has to go beyond just the fluff of what you can disclose and what you can't, but to real stuff, right? Normalizing things and, and embracing uh, that every woman comes with her failures and success has the opposite, I mean, has, has vulnerabilities and, and we should talk about them. Finally, what is your one bit of advice you have for women entrepreneurs heading into 2020? This was the advice I gave myself because I am not a seasonal entrepreneur. I have been <laughs> a scared entrepreneur. I looked into the mirror and saw failure every day and wondered, you know, I should have just stayed a journalist. Very happy being on prime time, seeing my face on television, national <laughs> TV. It's a comfortable position if you know how to do it well. But it was tough for me to make um, the switch. Uh, it was even harder to not be like the apple of everyone's conversations every evening because being an entrepreneur means you go back to rock bottom and start again. But I think the one thing I reminded myself is that take a chance on yourself because behind every woman is herself. That's it. There's nothing else to look at.
I am in awe of the work you do. It was such an honor to meet you and I wish you all the best with ChewThePeople.tv. I'll be watching all your moves going forward. Thank you and we hope to uh, partner and collaborate with G-Sport and various other women-led organizations in South Africa. So thank you for having me. Shelly Chopra is the founder of ShethePeople.tv, a wonderful woman. Do follow her.